starting out with the uh, Whistle Pig 18 year. Oh yeah, this is the double malted rye. What's interesting with this release is they're actually doing chapters, which I didn't realize. They released chapters one and two without like really making a hubbub about it. But then this time they're like, oh, it's the fourth chapter, which kind of implies there'll be more. But this is an 18 year old rye. Um, it's from Canada. So we know that it's coming from those Alberta stocks. It's 79% rye in the mash bill, 15% malted rye and 60, uh, sorry, 6% malted barley and then All they right. went and took that and finished it in px sherry cast so pedro jimenez uh, kind of interesting yeah very interesting really because the finished stuff that we see from whistle pig is typically not straight into sherry whether it's like one of their bespoke blends or their 12 year where they're using multiple different wine casks and then blending that or if it's their estate oak finish like a 15 year or the boss hog which is usually absolutely batshit crazy like we spoke about earlier so <laughs> For it to be just a straight up uh, sherry finish is really interesting, uh, as well as it being a double malt. So by that, when they say double malt, they're meaning that this has malted rye and malted barley in it, uh, which is kind of like a, an interesting term. You usually hear about single malts, uh, not a whole lot of press about double malts, which is I'm sure why Whistle Pig did it because they're a little bit wild. They do some crazy stuff and they like to do things that most people don't. So I think without further ado, uh, let's get a couple notes on the nose and dig into some of the more particulars about this 18 year release. Definitely, this should be between three and $400 based on your market. I forget the exact MSRP. The first release of this, which wasn't finished at all, I, I noticed is a very perfumey rye, like it's very bright, very citrusy herbal. And so I think it should take those nice sherry notes. And I am kind of getting that on the nose here. Like it is herbal perfumey. Again, there's like lots of lavender and orange peel and kind of essence, but the sherry comes through, you know, a little bit more mild than I would have expected it to. And I'm, I'm into that. Yeah. It's there. It pops. It's got a good brightness to it, which that Canadian rye that they use is just usually so good. It brings a lot of different layers to it, whether it's spice, a little bit of like a uh, rock candy kind of sweet vibe to it. But with the sherry mixing and you get that like, touch of fruit that extra oomph from the wine and, and i think that's pretty cool it's so far on the nose is it does there's like zero ethanol on this like i mean this is proof much lower than a lot of their other stuff this is coming in at 92 proof which for a whistle pig product is kind of low except for the i think the piggyback line is always right around 100 right or is piggyback 90 i'm gonna get my oh, wires crossed here i know that all of their beyond bonded is like the 100.1 proof but I think piggyback is 100 as well i probably should have yeah. checked that out they really like to stick around that 50 percent abv range i do you know i did not mind this was 46 percent abv in the original batches it's non-show filtered you know i i think i'm less of a proof head than i used to be like i it still has really nice viscosity which is really important to me more than the proof like sure where i notice i prefer higher proof things is because they have a better you know, they taste better, they taste richer, more oily, they're just kind of more satisfying. And this definitely has that richness on the palate. I do get quite a bit more of the wine and it actually drinks, there's a pang of ethanol. So, it, you know, it feels a tiny bit hot, but nothing unreasonable, but it's really balanced on the palate compared to the nose that was like spicy, herbal. Oh, and then a little bit of sweet and wine. You know, the palate seems really balanced. I'm, I'm really enjoying this one. Yeah, this is really cool. Uh, I think this firmly places itself in the enthusiast gifting category, meaning like this is more along the lines of what you might see. Like it, it, like the presentation of this is very much, I th also think, tailored to like the executive gift. Like this is on the bar cart in the executive office or in the study of your home. This is the bottle that I think a lot of these releases are something that you feel like Probably it's going into the collection of a whiskey buyer who has three or 400 bottles of whiskey. And this is one that they just had to have with it. The Whistle Pig 18, I think, is that one that this might be for somebody who has a dozen bottles of whiskey. You know, somebody who's got some high-end scotch and a few other bottles of bourbon. But this is that nice gift that really kind of stood out. It's got great presentation. The, you know, the bespoke stopper that's on this is really good like they have a hand press topper that comes with the packaging for the whistle pig 18 and every time they roll out a new one these are handmade in vermont so it's like and just another one of these sort of uh 
like small town vibe you get from whistle pig but like still with beautiful presentation so i feel like the proof point also kind of caters to the this is an enthusiastic buyer but maybe not somebody who's sipping barrel proof whiskey a few times a week like we might right there with you and i am glad you called out the topper because i was going to point that out and i was really surprised so i own the first batch i let two and three go by me just because they didn't appear in my market same. and i expected that this would have the same stopper as batch one and lo and behold it definitely does not this is we'll see if we get a this is a completely different stopper than the first batch it's a round one which is kind of cool i also appreciate they added actual o-rings because the right. first round didn't have that and i actually reached out to them and was like is this decorative only because it doesn't actually make a seal and for $400, like your stopper, you would should... like it to seal the bottle. To me, people are always going to ask, you know, is that a $400 whiskey? And I'm going to say, no, it's not $400 whiskey, but you're paying for a lot more and you're getting a lot more. And that's really important for people who are looking to give a nice gift that isn't just the best whiskey in the world in this janky ass bottle or this old, like, you know, very nondescript. Like this is very much meant to be a whole experience. And well, you know, we don't rate with pricing in mind, so that kind of makes it easy. This is a whole package. Comes in a fancy box, nice topper, whiskey's good. Um, I'd call this business class whiskey all day long, and there's nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to hold the bottle up there so we could get a little view of it. But yeah, I mean, it's got a nice uh, little gold placard on the front of it. The topper, like you mentioned. All in all, I think it's a really good presentation. And like you said, is the whiskey itself a three or $400 whiskey? No, the presentation does make up for it. And in the regards of it making a great gift or it being a good conversation piece this is definitely i think checking the boxes that they were going for with this and over and like and it tastes great too i really kind of dig it it's uh it's got a good jamminess to it a good like a, almost like a, a sweet tea vibe but without being too sweet um I, I get some of those tea notes in there that i like i get Everything from that Canadian rye that I dig to the extra age in there brings in some really good oak, like almost like a little kiss of like a, a slight herbalness to it. It's just overall, I think it's balanced in a really cool way and it's finished well. So that's just overall kind of fun. Yeah, my final thoughts. I don't hate that this is 46%. I think it does a really nice job. It brings a lot of flavor, a lot of complexity. I do really like wine finished ryes because rye has that big body and punch that can kind of cut through that sweetness so overall really balanced really complex despite the fact that you know it's 46 percent abv and i really don't wish that it was higher i'm enjoying this you can have a second pour if you want it you can share it people you know this might convert some folks to whiskey overall uh you know if you can stomach the cost i i think it's worth a pickup but uh, you know at the same token just like my first one that's still half full like i'm not gonna just kind of pour this whenever because it is special i think this is a definitely an occasion whiskey for sure 100 percent. this is a very good special occasion whiskey this is the retirement gift this is the wedding day bottle to bust out not at the wedding where everybody's gonna want to drink it <laughs> uh, but it is definitely a very cool bottle makes for a killer gift this is something that if you were to gift this to somebody who knows that they like whiskey and you want to get them something they've never had, if you see this for 300 bucks, it's a killer gift for that price, I think. Yeah, it makes an impression. It makes an impression in more ways than one. And that's exactly where I'm, it's the way to go.